thank you all for joining our community and coffee chat this week. We're super excited. We're actually going to be talking about holiday 2020, which if you didn't already know it, you should start prepping right now, which is kind of crazy being it only being August, but definitely now is the perfect time to start prepping those holiday strategies. So we wanted to make sure to be able to get on here and just talk through it all. Uh, we'll basically be answering questions on everything from high level strategies for your holiday campaigns, how the influencer and community landscapes have shifted their messaging during the pandemic and how it's going to change this year. And then basically talk through our predictions for our storytelling themes that will win out this year. So uh, before we get into all of that, I'd like to go ahead and introduce myself. If you haven't been on our community and ch coffee chat before, my name is Madison Smith, and I'm the senior marketing strategist here at Aspire IQ. And I'm joined as always by my lovely co-host, Magda, if you wanna intro yourself. Yes. Hi, everyone. I'm Magda. I am the director of marketing strategy at Aspire IQ. So we've been doing these community and coffees, I think since March or April now. Um, and they've just been a lot of fun for us to sit down and chat with you guys, especially since we're not able to you know, meet with our, our brand partners in person anymore. Um, so we'll go through, as Madison said, questions that we have gathered from our existing clients so far. So I am actually going to answer the first question. So the first question that we have gotten a lot of just over the past several years actually is, when should I start prepping my holiday influencer campaigns? And the answer is right now. So Facebook actually put together a really uh, interesting map um, and we'll share it as a resource when we set, uh, share out the recording for today's session. But it basically breaks down holiday planning into three different phases. There's the prepare phase, the aware phase, and the convert phase. So prepare is right now. And this is basically when we encourage brands to figure out exactly what their organic and paid strategy will be for holiday. One quote also that came from Facebook is that this holiday shopping season will look different compared to years gone by. However, it'll be more important than ever for people to come together and share gifts with their loved ones. And I think that this is incredibly true and something that we're seeing a lot. And when it comes to the prepare phase and how you can start planning for uh, what your holiday message is going to be is you can start testing different messages and see what lands. So you can uh, prep who you want to target and figure out what influencers are going to target those people organically. And also what segmentations you guys can do for your paid ads on Facebook, uh, Instagram, etc. and figure out what messages are resonating there. So that's kind of what you can do right now. And then we're seeing the aware phase start around September, October. So this is when you should start expecting that you want to get your community you know very well familiarized with what your main product offering gift offering etc is going to be this holiday season so we have thanksgiving black friday small business saturday cyber monday giving tuesday all happening within i believe six weeks of each other um so it's important to let people know what that's going to look like ahead of time so when you're thinking about awareness, this can be accomplished again in two different ways. You can work with different influencers that can start talking about what they're most excited to shop from your brand or your service this holiday season. Um, and you can also, again, do awareness campaigns uh, through Facebook, Instagram from a paid perspective as well and leverage you know, your community-driven content for those ads. Um, so yeah, I guess long winded answer to when you should start prepping, absolutely start prepping now. And then I would say to start really testing and building that awareness message messaging, uh, as, as early as September. Or so, you know, in just a couple of weeks. Yeah, I wholeheartedly agree. Definitely now is really the time to prepare, like I mentioned before. And I also love being able to start this early because I feel like it really allows you to be able to test a lot. I mean, you don't really want to start going out with your sales and from and promotions, you know, right before, you know, right in November or December, right when people are shopping, because you don't really know what then is going to be the best sort of promotions to be putting out during this time. So definitely getting a head start and start testing, you know, paid ads with influencer content to people like deal hunters who, you know, are looking for, you know, those promotions through, you know, maybe it's something where you target people that, you know, like to shop with, you know, Retail Me Not or Honey or Rakuten, things like that. Those are great people to target right from the beginning just to 
get those, you know, juices flowing with your sales and promotions. Definitely looking at people who have signed up for your email list, but not necessarily made a purchase yet. Pushing out emails to them that are like your best, most popular products, just to sort of wet their palate as to what you might be offering this holiday season, or just to get, you know, their mind churning about what they might want to purchase this holiday season. And then, you know, obviously going through your, your loyal members. So what special discount or promo or sale are you going to have for your, you know, your best customers, your most loyal fans? And then I think that it's also a great time to test out the people that may have shopped you last year, but maybe they didn't, you know, shop with you throughout the rest of the year, but they, you see them keep coming back during the holiday season, definitely targeting those people as well, because they're going to be once again wanting to buy gifts and because they were such a great, you know, maybe they were great customers last year, definitely want to go ahead and target them again. So making sure that you're able to utilize them to get a bunch of insights back on what really is working, what ads are working, what types of influencers are working, how, you know, the, what the best way that you're activating your community is so that once it does come time to be November and December, you know exactly what works. Yeah. Especially since it, it's, you can't be as predictive as you have been in past holiday seasons where it's like generally this works for us because things are so different. I think another thing that has come up is the difference between people shopping um, on a needs base versus a wants base. So figuring out that ahead of time too. Are your customers, are the people that were shopping last year looking for the same types of products, the same price point, what's feasible, what's not. Unfortunately, you know, everyone knows that unemployment is incredibly high right now. That could change the way people are purchasing. So to your point, Madison, I think testing early and testing right now is going to be critical. That way, when you do turn on these campaigns for a lot of businesses, especially businesses that may have been struggling with sales during this time, this could be a really great bounce back time. So you don't want to miss this opportunity and, uh, you know, turn on a campaign as you normally would and risk it not performing as well as it has in, in seasons past. Yeah, I definitely agree. So the, I'll go ahead to the next question that we got. So the next question we got is, with everything going on this year, it feels unsympathetic to push holiday promotions and sales. How can I figure out what my messaging should be? So I think this is probably one of the best questions that we'll probably answer today because this is the exact same question that we got a lot right when the pandemic hit as well. Brands just really didn't know how to promote their products and, you know, continue with their marketing calendars when all of the pandemic was happening. And I think that that those lessons that you learned back then can definitely also kind of be reflected in what you do now. And I think the most important thing is asking your community. Just, I mean, this is what you did back when the pandemic first started. You asked your community what they wanted to see what would be helpful for them is it just somebody to hear you out and just you know a lot of brands had you know discussions zoom meetings chipotle had a bunch of zoom meetings that they hosted just to connect with their their community and i think that that's something that you can now bring back into the holiday season is tapping into your community your loyalists and ask them you know how should we go ahead and navigate this holiday season when people might be like Magda, you said, where people might really more be shopping for their needs rather than their wants this holiday season. So, you know, one way you could do that is maybe on Instagram, you have, you know, you post something where you have your followers comment on an Instagram video or, you know, ask them to tag you in their stories of a video of you explaining, you know, how they'll be shopping this year and what you can do and what maybe your products can do to really help them this year. I think that might be one way to do it. Um, another way I think that you can kind of push your messaging is more, I, I'm a big fan of gift guides. I, I love gift guides for the holiday season. I think they're a great way to showcase your most popular items, but also maybe other items that go with those products or services that you, you know, that you promote that people may not have thought about. Um, and just, I mean, also you can kind of interlace your products if you're like a food brand with recipes and things like that. That's great for the holiday season. But with gift guides specifically, I just love that they're really a great way to promote kind of your holiday sales, but taking them a step further this year, which is what I've been recommending to a lot of people who have started asking about kind of how they can do this, um, their promotions this, this holiday season. But partnering with influencers to create the gift guides instead of 
necessarily your brand pushing out the gift guide. And the, the reason why I think this would be the most beneficial this year is because they're having an influencer create the gift guide is it not only creates this like very authentic kind of personalized content, but, and through somebody relatable, which is obviously what you want the most, but you can have them create a gift guide really based on their real friends and families. And instead of those like overdone gift guides that are like, Oh, what's a gift for mom this, you know, Christmas or whatever it may be, whatever holiday that you celebrate, or, you know, the friend who has everything. We've seen all those gift guides. Like, you know, we, it's, it, something needs to change this year. And I think this is the perfect time to do it is having influencers make guides that are like, what to get your friend who's you know at home with three kids right now who may be juggling their job with teaching their their children during this holiday season all while trying to you know put on a holiday season um maybe it's for you know instead of the friend who has everything maybe you have an influencer do a gift guide that's like you know your fashion loving friend who's going through furlough right now or your sister who, you know, just had a baby during the pandemic, like things like that. And I think that you can really pull out depending on what sort of products or services you offer. I think that working with influencer partners, you can have them just really relate the gift guide back to their own personal lives. And I think that that's a way that you can kind of like make it not that unsympathetic message because, you know, right now, we don't need to be pushing out products for the girl who has everything. You know, we need to really be supporting our communities and that's a great way for brands to go about doing that. And, and in tune with that, I think that, I mean, this we saw this a lot during the um, marketing during the early days of the pandem pandemic and still now is giving, doing your holiday sales with a give back message. And we, we saw that a lot. I know there's a lot of brands that we have on our platform that did a lot of amazing, amazing work with um, having their, you know, pushing out their products, but with that give back message. And maybe it's the same one that you did back when, you know, COVID first hit or one that you're currently doing right now where saying, hey, like we were able to donate 100,000 pairs of socks, you know, back in April this holiday season, we want to double that. We want to triple that. And here's how we want to go about doing it. And we want you guys to help us. I, I, I think that message is really the way to show that you support your community and the communities around you. And that's, I think this holiday season is really where people are going to put their money is when they know that it's tied to a good cause. And there was, um, Magda mentioned this before, this Facebook um, like kind of holiday guide that they put out. And I really liked this quote that they had. They said, the new value equation, affordability, authenticity, and action. And basically they did this part of the huge survey that they did. They found that 82% of people they, that they surveyed agreed that brands should give back. So like I said, we've seen this all throughout the pandemic, but your community is going to care about what you're doing to give back and your personal brand values. And that's really what is going to matter a little bit more than necessarily the cost of your products. Yeah, I agree a thousand percent. I think if you have the means to do some sort of give back this holiday season, it really will go very far. And I think not even just from a marketing perspective, I think that that would make everyone feel a little bit better. I know that I feel better when I have the means to donate. Um, but I, I think the other thing, to that point uh, is when you have influencers and you're working with them for hol like ho any sort of holiday promotion, they're going to be really excited to tell that story. That they, you know, they want to be relatable to their community. They want to understand the needs and kind of the the limitations that their community is currently facing. So if they're working with a brand partner that is saying, "Hey, this is the message that we're looking to push out. This is how we want to give back. These are the products that we'd love to hear your story around how you intend to gift them." go ahead and tell that story, they're going to be much more inclined to do that versus something as simple as we're having a great Black Friday sale and we would love for you to promote it. Yeah, and we actually just had a question come through, but I, I just want to restate that again. The That quote was the new value equation, affordability, authenticity, and action. 
All right, so the next question I will tackle. So what platforms should I be utilizing for holiday promotions? There is quite a bit of competition on Facebook and Instagram. So I am all about diversifying the platforms in which you're promoting. And the ones that I think are, the, are very interesting, I certainly, just before I dive in, I think that there is a ton of value in working on Facebook and Instagram. There are so many people there. You can reach such a diverse audience organically, you can reach an even broader, more diverse uh, audience from a paid perspective. Uh, but when it comes to diversifying your strategy, I very much would say that Pinterest is the place to be during the holiday season. People go to Pinterest to start getting inspiration. I believe that Pinterest has already seen an uptick in holiday searches earlier this year than we saw last year. Uh, so working with pinners organically where you are having them either promote the gift guide that they created, create a beautiful graphic out of that and post that on their own organic Pinterest page where you guys can repin it. Or if it's something like taking that influencer content and using it for Pinterest ads. I think Pinterest is a really great place for a uh, holiday budget to go. And then I think the other one that I'm really excited about is TikTok. I know that there is just some up in the air stuff going on with TikTok and whether or not it will still be here in 45 days or not. Um, fingers crossed it is because I am obsessed with TikTok. But uh, all that said, there, have, there were so many brands that did incredible back to school TikTok campaigns. And we actually talked about that a few weeks back in Community and Coffee, but brands like Hollister and um, American Eagle and Jansport. And we're just seeing such incredible engagement on these platforms. And I think that that's something that absolutely could be replicated for a holiday. So maybe it's not even promoting a holiday sale, but given the way Gen Zers just interact with brands in general, TikTok could be a great place to promote whatever your holiday, you know, charity give back or, or, you know, whatever that looks like, whatever the values are that you want to, you know, bring out even stronger than ever this holiday season, it would be awesome to align with TikTok creators, have them create something that could very easily go viral and just see hundreds of thousands, if not millions of pieces of user generated content come back around that trend. TikTok is incredibly interesting. And I think that it's what, it's a place where brands definitely should experiment uh, over the holiday season. And then I think that, you know, there's, there's other tactics. So when you think about your email marketing campaign and your um, just content distribution campaign in general, I think that this is something that we always say, but Sorry if you guys are hearing that ding for my next call. <laughs> uh, but this is something that we talk about all the time, but leveraging personalized content, content that is created by your influencer community, content that's created by your customer community, and using that for your email marketing efforts on your website, for your own gift guides as you guys are creating your own content in-house, that's gonna be incredibly powerful, especially when that's combined with the powerful storytelling that you're empowering your community of influencers to create. Um, but yeah, I would say definitely Instagram, Facebook for sure are, are reliable and steady, but definitely get experimental on Pinterest. And, you know, if TikTok is, is still around, I would, you know, very much encourage brands to test what organic TikTok partnerships look like, as well as TikTok ads for that, for those who that's available to them. Yeah, I'm a big fan of Pinterest. So if you want to look up a way, to, a, a great tool on Pinterest is the Pinterest trends tool. Definitely go ahead and Google that and look that up. It's very fun to play around with. All right, so I'll go ahead and take the next question. So what are some strategies I can use to activate influencers in the most successful way this holiday season? So I think that you can use influencers in a, a couple of different ways. So the most important one is definitely to continue to utilize the people that you've worked with in the past that you've done partnerships with and you were really happy with the results. This way they're, they're really continuously kind of looping your brand message into their everyday life and your values as well. And that, that being able to lead up to the holiday season, it's not going to feel like inauthentic when, you know, an influencer just kind of talks about your brand one off. If people have been seeing your brand looped into the messaging with a specific influencer for the past couple months, then it's just going to make a lot more sense come, come time to promote your like November and December sales. And when they've been posting about it the past few months, then it just makes sense and is very authentic to be able to then weave it in for the holiday season. So definitely, definitely utilize your 
previous influencers that you've continued to work with um, that you've had also had great results with. And then another way is I think that it would be, it's great to utilize influencers that really match your customer profile or basically like the people that you wish to target this holiday season. And I think this way you, you not only promote to those who reflect the people that are buying from your brand, but you also have this content library full of these amazing images or videos that matches your existing customer base. And then you can repurpose that content in the paid ads that you use on Instagram or the organic boards that you create on Pinterest. Um, people really, I mean, we all know this, people want to be able to see themselves in the content that your brand puts out. Um, that's going to be even more important this holiday season. Um, so I think that that's definitely the best way is utilizing this influencer content, being able to get a diverse amount of influencer content that really matches that customer profile of the people that, and then you can kind of retarget on paid ads with lookalike audiences, but um, matching those customer pro profiles in the data. So I actually just finished reading this really great report that came, um, that was done by sale through. So if, if anybody wants to read it, it's called the holiday marketing 2020 playbook. And I really liked this quote that they had in it. Um, marketing teams with data at the center of their strategy achieve ROI 15 to 20% greater than those that don't effectively leverage customer information. So I think that goes, goes very well with the, the idea of matching the influencers you work with, with that customer profile, because you know, you're able to take the data that you've gotten from your previous customers and really match it to influencers and create that amazing content that then you can go ahead and repurpose. And then also when it comes to data, utilizing those influencers you've worked with in the past that you've had great results with and just reactivating them. Yeah, I, I agree with all of those points. Um, so the next question, I believe it is second to last, is how should I use influencers to promote my sales and promos? So obviously holiday sales are critical. As I mentioned earlier, there are a lot of businesses that are really relying on this holiday season to drive more revenue for their business. So it, it is, you know, very understandable that, you know, you look to influencers to help with that promotion. So I think the first thing is to get an idea of how many other brands these influencers are planning on working with over the holidays. Because if you're partnering with someone that is just pushing out tons and tons of coupon codes or just promoting one sale after another, yours is probably going to fall a little bit more on deaf ears. So aligning with people that are being more strategic, maybe just working with a handful of brands and to Madison's point, reinvesting in some of those influencers that you have worked with in the past, I think is a really good strategy to make sure that the message that you're telling uh, is really clear and um, is not cluttered by, by other brand stories. And then I think the next piece is once you find those partners that you think are going to do a really great job of telling that story, you can figure out kind of a gradual promotion strategy. So maybe right out of the gate, they're not saying, here's the Black Friday sale, here's everything, but maybe they start posting as early as October and they have a 10% promo that's exclusive to them. And then as they get closer to the holidays, they're saying, actually, you know, I... I'm so excited because this brand actually just ramped it up to 25% off. And, and having that, uh, I guess, that, that anticipation and that urgency by, by having these limited time offers and then having kind of towards the end or even on Black Friday, you know, I usually had 10%, now I have 25%, go, go, go. I think that that's going to be something that'll be exciting to consumers. And then I think all of that said, it does need to pair with, these, you know, these storytelling. I, I think that again, like you don't want to work with someone for just a one-off sponsored post where they have no affiliation with your brand and all they're posting is go shop their Black Friday sale. You want to have some sort of buildup that can happen, you know, for example, on Instagram in the feed, and then the story can happen um, on Instagram stories, IGTV, the new Instagram reels, you have space to kind of build out longer form content. But um, yeah, I would say aligning people that are not promoting too many different brands and then do some sort of promotional um, build up 10% to 20% to 25% and figure out ways in which that influencer can tease that out. Yeah, I love that. And I think something to add to that too is that, and I think that some brands kind of do this, but I think that it'd be a great promotion strategy for everyone is to, to remember that 
promotions don't necessarily need to be monetary. Like they can be something that is maybe, you know, a gift card bundle that, you know, you buy so many gift cards and you get, you know, so whatever it may be. Um, or doing like a, a freebie with the purchase. That's, that's actually a great way with influencers to promote like, oh, you know, here, use my personal code to get, you know, a, a travel size version of my favorite product in addition to what you're gonna end up ordering. And that again is great data to collect because then maybe those people that end up buying and getting this freebie, maybe then they end up, you track that they end up, um, you know, coming back and buying that full size of the product that you ended up giving as a freebie. So I think that that as well is to definitely think about, you know, not necessarily just a promo code is like what other incentives can you give people that may not be monetary. Yeah. I agree a hundred percent. I just saw a question that came in about the holiday marketing playbook. So we will go ahead and uh, record or uh, edit this session and we will have the recording here. And then we'll also include links to the resources that we're talking about. And we can just send that out in a follow-up email to everyone that registered. Um, I don't leave a couple minutes left, but one last thought uh, before we go is this question that is, what's a better strategy play for my brand? Focusing on short-term goals, i.e. holiday sales, or really kind of forgetting about the short-term goals and really just being laser focused on the long-term goals around brand loyalty? And the answer is it, it has to be both. I think that right now, as I had mentioned before a couple times, holiday sales are very critical to a lot of brands. So it's important to figure out what strategies can I do to drive sales in the immediate near term, but ultimately your long-term strategy should be focused on driving relationships and building your community and building goodwill with your customers. I think that even if this season, it's not going to be as big purchase value as it has been in seasons past, I think it is really important to continue to nurture your communities, your customers, have that, you know, high touch interaction with the people that matter most to you, whether they are, you know, social media advocates, influencers, top fans, you know, repeat customers, figuring out how you can continue to nurture those relationships is going to be really important. Um, but also ultimately you do want to do things like run, you know, your ad promotion with, with the goal of driving immediate sales.